release all foreign nationals, including American citizens you have unjustly imprisoned, and protect foreign journalists, diplomats, and aid workers in your country. Close immediately and permanently every terrorist training camp in Afghanistan and hand over every terrorist and every person in their support structure to appropriate authorities. Give the United States full access to terrorist training camps so we can make sure they are no longer operating. These demands are not open to negotiation or discussion. The Taliban must act and act immediately. They will hand over the terrorists or they will share in their fate. I also want to speak tonight directly to Muslims throughout the world. We respect your faith. It's practiced freely by many millions of Americans and by millions more in countries that America counts as friends. Its teachings are good and peaceful. And those who commit evil in the name of Allah blaspheme the name of Allah. The terrorists... <laughs> the terrorists are traitors to their own faith, trying, in effect, to hijack Islam itself. The enemy of America is not our many Muslim friends. It is not our many Arab friends. Our enemy is a radical network of terrorists and every government that supports them. Our war on terror begins with al-Qaeda, but it does not end there. It will not end until every terrorist group of global reach has been found, stopped, and defeated. <laughs> Americans are asking, why do they hate us? They hate what they see right here in this chamber, a democratically elected government. Their leaders are self-appointed. They hate our freedoms, our freedom of religion, our freedom of speech, our freedom to vote and assemble and disagree with each other. They want to overthrow existing governments in many Muslim countries, such as Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and Jordan. They want to drive Israel out of the Middle East. They want to drive Christians and Jews out of vast regions of Asia and Africa. These terrorists kill not merely to end lives, but to disrupt and end a way of life. With every atrocity, they hope that America grows fearful, retreating from the world and forsaking our friends. They stand against us because we stand in their way. We're not deceived by their pretenses to piety. We have seen their kind before. They are the heirs of all the murderous ideologies of the 20th century. By sacrificing human life to serve their radical visions, by abandoning every value except the will to power, they follow in the path of fascism, Nazism, and totalitarianism and they will follow that path all the way to where it ends, in history's unmarked grave of discarded lies.
Americans are asking, how will we fight and win this war? We will direct every resource at our command, every means of diplomacy, every tool of intelligence, every instrument of law enforcement, every financial influence, and every necessary weapon of war to the disruption and to the defeat of the global terror network. Now, this war will not be like the war against Iraq a decade ago with the decisive liberation of territory and a swift conclusion. It will not look like the air war above Kosovo two years ago where no ground troops were used and not a single American was lost in combat. Our response involves far more than instant retaliation and isolated strikes. Americans should not expect one battle, but a lengthy campaign, unlike any other we have ever seen. It may include dramatic strikes visible on TV and covert operations, secret even in success. We will starve terrorists of funding, turn them one against another, drive them from place to place, until there is no refuge or no rest. And we will pursue nations that provide aid or safe haven to terrorism. Every nation in every region now has a decision to make. Either you are with us or you are with the terrorists. From this day forward, any nation that continues to harbor or support terrorism will be regarded by the United States as a hostile regime. Our nation has been put on notice. We're not immune from attack. We will take defensive measures against terrorism to protect Americans. Today, dozens of federal departments and agencies, as well as state and local governments, have responsibilities affecting homeland security. These efforts must be coordinated at the highest level. So tonight I announced the creation of a cabinet level position reporting directly to me, the Office of Homeland Security. And tonight I also announced a distinguished American to lead this effort to strengthen American security, a military veteran, an effective governor, a true patriot, a trusted friend, Pennsylvania's Tom Ridge. He will lead, oversee, and coordinate a comprehensive national strategy to safeguard our country against terrorism and respond to any attacks that may come. These measures are essential. The only way to defeat terrorism as a threat to our way of life is to stop it, eliminate it, and destroy it where it grows. Many will be involved in this effort, from FBI agents to intelligence operatives to the reservists we have called to active duty. All deserve our thanks, and all have our prayers. And tonight, a few miles from the damaged Pentagon, I have a message for our military. Be ready. I've called the armed forces to alert, and there is a reason. Who rushed terrorists? to save others on the ground. Passengers like an exceptional man named Todd Beamer. And would you please help me welcome his wife, Lisa Beamer, here tonight.
Lisa, what did it feel like? It felt amazing. Um, I already know that what Todd did and what those other guys did um, that led to their ultimate death was not in vain, but to see the Capitol building standing here tonight and to have uh, so many people look up and say thank you because I was in the Capitol that day was just such a source of inspiration and encouragement to me tonight. And to refresh the audience's memory, you found out about all this through a GTE operator, right? That, that's correct. Briefly tell us what happened. I just got a call on Friday night uh, that GTE had let United Airlines know that Todd had made a call from the air. And the next morning, Saturday, I spoke with the operator who had taken that call and she walked me through uh, the information that Todd had given her and just told me about um, his words and his countenance at the time and what he had done. and ultimately found out that he had been involved in planning this rush on the attackers and um, decided to, with the other guys um, that they were ready and, and just did that let's roll, which we've heard a million times, but um, said let's roll and started their operation, um, which probably led to um, me standing here tonight in this Capitol building, which is still standing. Boy, I, what, a, what a thrill at the, the sadness and the thrill at the same time. Have you spoken again to that operator since? I have not spoken to her, but I will speak to her in the future. Now, you have two young sons, right, David and Drew, and you got another baby due, right? That's correct. How are you holding up? I know, I know there's a part of this with all the attention and the heroics involved, but you said the other night it's your faith that keeps you through, right? That's right. Um, like I said, I know that Todd's death was not in vain. I see evidence of, of it all over um, with people who have come up to me and said what an inspiration um, his faith and my faith have been to them, and I just hope that it leads to a, a revival of faith in this country and in this world. Uh, it's clear that that's what we need right now, and it's the time for that for our country. What did you think of the president's speech? Um, it left me walking away feeling confident that he is, uh, has his arms wrapped around this problem. Uh, it certainly is not going to be an easy problem to solve, but uh, they already have taken specific actions like the new cabinet uh, position, which will make it easier for us to fight this battle than it has been in the past. And I have every confidence that this administration will take care of the problem. And one other thing, Lisa, you seem to be dealing remarkably with your grief. How do you explain that? I just explain it by um, the fact that I know that Todd is in heaven right now and I know I'm going to see him again and I know that his death was not in vain and it was part of God's plan and uh, the evilness world will ultimately be conquered by God and um, he used Todd to be part of that and it's something I can hold on to in the moments when I'm not this calm, cool and collected, which there are many of, I assure you. Thank you, Lisa. Lisa Beamer from Capitol Hill.